So the pot has been stirred up with Cat Williams doing his uh, interview with Char- Shannon Sharp and Forgotten TV, Forgotten Kings TV. Sorry about that. Had released a clip that he had found of Ice Cube clearing up in the response with Cat Williams, uh, and we're just gonna get right into it. Behind it on on a few things, uh, most of what he was saying, uh, a couple things, you know. Um, I just want to clarify. Yo, what's up? This bruh man from the fifth float. And you tuned in to Forgotten Kings TV. Um, just wanted to address a few things. You know, everybody been checking out the internet. Uh, my man, Cat Williams. Um, you know, first of all, I just want to say, you know, we shot that movie over 20 years ago so which is crazy man 20 years ago and there's still always just whether it's messy things in the business or just people are just not happy with certain roles that they get it is just crazy that this was 20 over 20 years ago and they have to speak it's not even the celebration of the movie being made but more so the fact that they have to come and argue about a messy situation of maybe someone who wasn't being truthfully in the perception of what they were putting out on the internet and it's like man this is a uh a classic film that was made collab coll- you know on a collection of like all these talented actors and writers and it's not being celebrated it's more so being bought up in a more toxic way which is it's a sad thing to see man it should be more celebrated than it being put in the shadows of fighting and bickering right you know people have different perspectives and it's been a long time um i also want to say you know every comedian that i've worked with every comedian that i've put in a movie I only put them in the movie because I thought they was funny. Mm. I thought they was perfect for the part. Mm. Um, I tried to put them in a position to win. Um, and he has done that in like in in a lot of his career. He has always tried to put people that he felt deserving to have the talent. He always tried to put them uh, and, and put the spotlight on them. So you know, respects for that. That's what it's all about. You know, I don't. I don't. You know, I look at <clears throat> from, you know, Chris Tucker and Bernie Mac and Mike Epps, Cat Williams, um, you know, Ricky Smiley, Michael Blackson, um, Cedric, um, Cat, I mean, Kevin, Kevin Hart. Um, you know, all these guys I know are funny as hell. You know, they, I didn't discover them. You know, they were doing their stand-up or doing their thing, and I I knew that they were great and that they could act and that, um, you know, if I, if I have an opportunity, I was going to give them an opportunity. You know, to me, that's what it's all about. Um, you know, as far as, you know, specific things, you know, um, Cat was 100 on, on a few things, uh, most of what he was saying. Uh, a couple things, you know, um, I just want to clarify. Uh, when we bring in a new, you know, comedian, um, we do have them try out for different roles. So mm. Ricky did um, give Money Mike a shot. Okay. Um, but when we saw him and, you know, we kind of, and so, you know, just this is this is a, a good thing that Ice Cube comes out and he responds because like and, and kind of give a perspective from him being the, 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 the back end of the writer and director and in the back scenes as he's also acting to kind of let people know, like, you know, there are all additional processes. And so, you know, what Ricky Smiley was talking about some of the things he he must he had said in his interview when he was up there it's not all lies you know what i'm saying and everyone has perspectives it's different cat williams only gonna see what he sees right when he's talking in his heart he's really speaking from the truth 
but there's still going to be blurred lines in between things and business and you're not going to know every single detail in business you're just not going to know that especially when it comes to entertainment business because they're only going to tell you what you want what what you want I mean, they're only going to tell you what you need to, what they want you to hear, basically. Like, they're only going to show you and tell you what you need to hear and what you what you want to hear. And there's other blurred lines in the business that you're not going to always get insight on. Saw how he moved and how he was, you know, um, auditioning. We decided that he would be a better, uh, you know, Santa Claus, uh, which was, to me, the perfect casting. Uh, when we saw M Mike, I mean, uh, <laughs> damn, I'm calling him Money Mike. When we saw <laughs> Cat, you know, w when I saw him, he, I just knew that he was perfect for Money Mike. Um, and you know, Cat, Cat, you know, said he wrote his role, which, I mean, the role was written, but he enhanced it. This is why Cat um, was so dope in the movie. You know, Money Mike had a small role, you know, about as big as the Santa Claus role. But when we start filming, he was giving us such magic mm. that we kept expanding his role. Wow. So, like, this shows you the talent that Cat Williams has, not only as an actor, but as a writer and a visionary within a role of a character that he sees and that can bring it alive. And that's something that we can't take away from Cat Williams also. Like, this guy, he's seriously, when he's about his craft and a character he has to play, he's going to give you 100%. That's pretty cool. Give any more to do because he was on point. Um, you know, when we shoot these movies... You know, for one, the scripts are fire, or they wouldn't even do it. The scripts are la a laugh out funny. But we shoot the script, but once we get what we need from the script, we let the comedians ad lib, riff, you know, play with the words, do their thing. You know, we give them a take where they can, or two, three takes where they can go off and do what they feel. Um, you know, sometimes it makes the movie, sometimes it don't. You know, when somebody gives you jewels, you want to uh, try to make sure that makes the movie. Okay. Um, so in the movie, there's... Second thing I want to clear up. It was never... I would never shoot a rape scene uh, in a movie, especially like Friday. Um, where mm. he actually so there's two things about it it seems like he was really surprised about this or just really disappointed as you can tell like even in the sound of his voice you know it's, it's a very tough touchy situation and topic to talk about and I, I i definitely feel like even if so like even if so like he even if he's not his whereabouts or them changing the script or whatever like at the end of the day sometimes they really don't have control either way it goes when it comes to when you got people who are funding this movie and then they have to have you shoot it and they want certain things and change in the different directions especially in the entertainment um, business that you don't really have control of the end product all the time if you don't have a hundred percent funding in the movie and this is why I, I would say for anybody who's on the outside who's not in the business of entertainment or don't understand this stuff like you have to really do your homework and understand that these people who are actors and writers they still have to answer to the people who are funding this movie you know what i'm saying now ice cube could decide to just scrap it to not do the movie too right if he feels like there's not the direction he wants to go if they change up completely his vision but we have to understand that like it's not always going to be in their control so i'm gonna let him finish this out and then i'm gonna let, i'm gonna have the link to forgotten kings tv so you can check the rest of the clip out on his channel but i'm just gonna let him finish talk about this situation all right actually see this happening on camera that ain't my style if you check out any of my movies they not raunchy. Um, you know, we did a movie called Players Club where the subject matter was a little raunchy, but but for the most part, um, even that, we 
we left it to your imagination. So the only reason that kind of stuff was in the movie is because you have three villains in Friday After Next. You have Santa Claus still in presence. You have Damon just got out of prison, <laughs> uh, sweating, Craig and Dady for the rent money. And then you have Money Mike, you know, a pimp that treats his woman, uh, you know, like a property. So Craig is always fighting the villains in the movie, you know, from the Joker <laughs> Brothers to Debo. And so we always we already had Craig fighting Santa Claus. And the only real way to get rid of the other two villains was to have them go against each other. And the the plier joke was always in the script, you know, it was never, um, we would never ever show that, you know, that's not my style. If you look at any of my movies. Um, so, you know, that was never a, a discussion, you know, we, you know, at, at that point in everybody's career, you know, we, we would listen to a certain extent, but we wasn't gonna, change the movie for it for any actor you know we we do what we feel and if, if it was a rape scene it would have been in the movie um it was no reason not to shoot it <laughs> see told you so it's like at the end of the day uh you know whether it's a writer whether it's an actor if it's getting funded by a, a bigger entity it doesn't matter <laughs> like is you do the job or not and if not, they have to just find somebody else who's willing to do the job. You know what I'm saying? Because the people who has the vision, they have to take it to the people who's funding it. And the people who's funding it, they give the okay impress of like, this is what we want. This is what we think this best for what we're funding and putting our investment into this movie. So I like, and by the way, I'm just like y'all, like what, you know, Ice Cube might have been funded the whole movie. I don't know, right? Say, like, this is why we have to do our homework. We can't jump into conclusions, right? But just looking, you know, and like he just said, like, at the end of the day, if it was going to be in the movie, it's going to be in the movie, and they don't, they're just not going to change and alter what you, what you feel as far as, like, a part should be put out and left out in the movie, you know what I'm saying? If it's supposed to be budgeted into the movie, then they're going to do that and shoot it, you know what I'm saying? Unless they all feel like it's not it's not suitable, then they wouldn't have it in there. So, anyways, I'm going to have the link to his channel if you want to check the rest of it out. Also, hit that thumbs up and the subscribe button and let me know what you think. Uh, put down in your comments, what do you feel? Did you feel like Cat Williams was completely in the wrongs for bringing out, the, bringing out stuff like this? Or do you think that he was just genuinely just just being himself and just trying to just let him know how he is in the industry? Like, what do you think? Anyways, this is your boy KJ. I'm out.